Patricia comes from South Africa, from a trade union led by women uh, called Sikula Sonke. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, um, where I come from, we say it Amantla. A word. We too. <laughs> it means the strength is ours, no? And also um, a very powerful um, slogan used by us women in South Africa is Watinta Bafazi, Watinta Mbogoto. It's closer. It means if you strike a woman, you strike a rock. No? And um, I believe we are products of that rocks because um, we were struck and we've been heard and we had um, 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 conquered. Uh, that's why we can also be called the rocks now. Uh, my name is Patricia, my surname is Diata. I'm the General Secretary of Sikola Sonke. I'm also a former farm worker and a farm dweller. I have um, lived on a farm since the age of five years old and um, two years back moved from the farm, not um, um, because I want to, after 31 years living on the farm. It's because um, my mom died and um, the 10 year rights was also gone with it, despite the fact that I've been there all my life. So that's the challenges that we as farm children faced. Um, when your father or your mother die, they've worked on the farm. There's no job for us as kids anymore on the farms because um, previously the generations, the housing were owned, the same house were owned by a generation of the same family for years. But as um, laws have passed, as um, the Sikola Sonkes was born, Sikola Sonke means we grow together. Um, and it's is it closer. It, um, I am, um, is it closer? I'm a closer woman, 100%, but I speak closer with an Afrikaans accent. And I also speak Afrikaans very fluent and used to be number one in Afrikaans, <laughs> despite the fact that I'm not Afrikaans. But it's also um, 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 apartheid that have actually forced me to um, speak Afrikaans because my language could not be spoken after um, the Dom Pass came in. My mum, my dad, they were um, from the Western Cape, but when the apartheid laws came in, my mum and my dad was also relocated to Transkei, that's the Eastern Cape, they call it now the homelands. Not my homeland, but it needs to be my homeland now. <laughs> but, um, 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 um. So, so, so every time we played as children, um, 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 we spoke closer. We were little kids, we spoke closer and um, when um, the policeman came and say, um, they called us kafirkis, no kafirs, I don't know the K word. Um, it's not used anymore because you, you can go to jail <laughs> um, in South Africa now for calling the K word. So they will come and say kafirkis, where's your mom? Your ma? Um, it's like kafirs, where's your mom? Um, and when they, we don't know most, we, we're children and we will show our mom and our mom will be locked up for not having a dom pass. So, so, so it was actually very, um, 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 quite traumatizing for us to see our mom every time being locked up because she don't have a dom pass. So that forces us into speak Afrikaans. And we learned Afrikaans and we speak Afrikaans and we speak Afrikaans so fluently. Um, even if I sit amongst um, people that are closer people, if I start to speak, they're like, um, um, what are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm closer, but um, I'm raised in an Afrikaans community and I speak fluently Afrikaans. Um, and I believe also one of the things that I always said, um, apartheid tried to break me, tried to break us. But in fact, they didn't break me. They made me multilingual, and today I can speak um, more than one languages, which have, I, I am very proud of because um, in South Africa it's also now a bonus plus to speak. But the irony is, I needed to learn my own language um, because I forgot my own language, and that's what's like a kind of sad. Um, but I'm also speaking closer now. 99, um, I learned my language because I wanted to speak my language. So it's closer and there's theater. The Afrikaans, they theater, I brought Afrikaans, and um, I'm speaking English. So yeah, um, sorry. Sikula uh, Sonke um, is an organization that was started by farm women during a time um, prior to 94, when um, farm people were also paid with um, wine as well. It was called the DOP system. I don't know if, if you're familiar with the DOP system. Um, men um, got wine, and then they was paid um, a little bit of money. But every night they, could get, uh, they used to get wine. 
Um, we went to live on the farm um, when I was five years old because I believe my mom was then so tired of all the running and being locked up and she did, just needed a safe shelter for her children and that's where, how we end up on the farms. Um, on the farms I was like, an, my mom got the job, um, my mom's cousin sister got her boyfriend um, because my mom and my dad was, was separated because of the apartheid system. So my dad used to live in the hostels and um, every, we used to live around and most of the time we grew up next to the railway station with my mom because she was always fleeing and it was me and my twin, my baby brother and an elder brother than us. Um, so that's how she decided to get herself um, somebody on the farm, which was a much more safer, safer time than in, during apartheid because at least you could have, um, 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 you, you, it, you, you, you are stopped from being, um, being locked up and, and, and jailed. So that's how we ended up on the farms and um, I remember um, um, my mom never drank. She, she, we, we grew up with parents that was um, not drinkers. Um, very loving people, but I also um, remember how that also changed when we go to a live on the farm. In order for, for my mom to be recognized and have friends on the farm, she also started to drink. And um, uh, I remember they used to go to work sober, but when people come back, people is drunk, and I couldn't understand that because uh, um, where I come from, this has never happened. So I couldn't understand it, but at the end of the day, I also, um, as I have um, learned to make friends with the African speaking children on the farm, I also went with them through the farm because I also want to see what is going on there. And um, to my amazement, when I got there, I actually saw um, the men got a liter and a 500 of wine. Um, and then um, the woman didn't get any wine, but the men share the wine with the woman. So they get the little one for, for the woman and the men drink the, um, the full one. And that's how I also realized that, oh, this is what the Dostas Dop system is. This is actually the thing that um, causes so much um, pain um, um, and hurt to the children on the farms and also causes um, so much gender-based violence in, um, in the farm families. And that's where um, early 90, just um, after 1994, um, there was an NGO called Women in Farms Project uh, that actually started um, to, to get together groups of women that living on farms that they went around pamphleting and that was actually um, on the, right, the rights of the farm, of a farm worker rights that we are also entitled to some rights now. Not much, but there is some rights. So that's how they started and that's how they started to um, actually um, 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 speak to the women on the farms around their rights and so. And um, there was a specific area, um, Stellenbosch area, Grabo area, um, where women have become very active because in Stellenbosch area, I, I, was, I, I, um, I grew up in the Stellenbosch area, um, women were exposed to gender-based violence because of the, 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 the DOP system and also um, men not maintaining their, their, their children because, well, um, if you drunk, you just need some more wine. No? and you don't have time for the food, you don't have time for the school shoes, you don't have time for the school fees and um, a woman um, 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 is a, um, 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 we women will always um, um, be worried and um, about um, what my children is going to eat, um, the school fees need to be paid and the men didn't actually bother and most of them didn't actually um, contribute to the household because the housing contracts were in their names. And they start to say, um, you're living under my roof, so why do I have to uh, contribute? Um, and um, these women um, learned about their rights through Women in Farms Project. And um, they realized, oh, we're knowing our rights now. So then they started to, to go to the courts to actually force the men to pay maintenance, force them to contribute. And where there was gender-based violence previously, when you go to the farmer, the farmer will say, no. Um, 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 you don't have a house here, the men have a house here, so I can do nothing about it because, well, um, it's your housing problem. When you go to the police, the police will tell you, but you can't put your man in jail because, well, um, who's going to work for you when you put your man in jail? So this is all the oppression that our, uh, our farm women have experienced, but also um, it can see also how oppressive the, the, the justice system all, all, um, always um, 
whilst within South Africa. So at the end of the day, these women um, find the courage um, to take a stand against the domestic violence, against the gender-based violence, against the maintenance, and um, make men um, force them to 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 oblige to their to to their responsibilities. Um, and then um, it went better, and you can also you could also see how beautiful women started to look. Um, you see less black eyes, and you see um, less rollers, and you see curls, and people start to look after them because of the one thing that we believed and the one thing that we've seen um, are that um, 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 you need um, to work within yourself in order to influence the change. So that's why it's also important, um, even speaking from, from personal experience, I also needed to work with myself um, 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 so that I can actually be an influence to the generation because I myself am um, 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 I'm an alcoholic and I've also experienced, started to experience wine at the age of 12 because our parents, they were too drunk. So we also wanted to feel how it feels to feel like them because it looks cool. We didn't have any other things or role models. So at the, at the age of 12, I was drinking, I was smoking. Um, so at the end of the day, it's like um, the culture that we inherited and it was okay because well, our fathers, our role models did that. So what's wrong with us not doing it? But at the end of the day, um, now that we are here now, we also know that um, it's not okay. And we do want better generations on farms. Um, and that's why Sikola Sonke is there. So we took a stand where we um, also um, inspire um, our people by um, sharing our own, but we know each other because well, um, we, uh, we, we come together. So um, what we do in Sikola Sikola Sonke was then um, founded uh, on the 9th of August. Um, 9th of August is um, Women's Day. It was founded on the 9th of August 2004 and then it was registered as a trade union in 10 December 2000 and, uh, 2004. Uh, the woman that was actually um, before me that, st that founded the, 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 the trade union that are now still founder members, they are still members and some of them are also holding national executive um, committee um, roles, branch executive committee roles, but also shop steward roles on the forms. Um, they so badly wanted um, 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 a, a trade union for women only during that time because the man was giving us a hard time. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, going to the re registration, um, it was not possible for men on, for, 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 for women only. So um, you need men to be in a trade union to be registered in, in South Africa. So um, women went back to the men and said, okay, um, we want to start our trade union because um, we are now improved uh, around our social um, yeah, um, social um, rights within our housing. Um, so we want now to work on the labor rights because people are still dismissed. And if a male loses his job um, during those days, um, the whole family will suffer the consequences. Whether the woman was still working on the farm, she and her children needs to be out because the men don't have a, a housing contract anymore because they don't work on the farm anymore. So um, that's why, why where Sikola Sonke also started, so that they can fight against the injustice of the labors, um, a labor how it was on the farms. And um, Sikola Sonke specialized in labor, where they um, fight against unfair dismissals, um, also um, represent um, farm workers um, at CCMI, right? CCMI is the um, uh, um, co a Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration between the employer and the employees. Um, and we also deal with social security issues because if you live on the farm, you can't um, separate the labor from the social because the farm work is dependent on the farmer for everything. Um, housing, transport um, is needed because while well, the farms are isolated, so school is far, um, Health facilities is far, um, like um, also um, 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 the town where they buy the food is also far. So um, all everything is um, they depend on the farmer. So Sikola Sonke also um, 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 focus on health and safety issues. Um, we work with pesticides, and during those days, people used to work in pesticides, and the tractor will grow brrrm, in the same vineyard as the woman and people will be um, soaking wet of the pesticides and that was unlawful but 
didn't knew that time and the world, people were actually um, 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 empowered to actually know what their rights is and that um, they don't have to work in a vineyard or an orchard where pesticides are spray, sprayed and they have a right to refuse. Learning our people, more people come resistance. And in Sikula Sonke we believe in building grassroots um, leadership where we have the, the members and then you have the farm committee elected by the members and then you have the branch executive committee who is the governing of the areas and then you have the uh, the, the, the um, organizers which is um, mostly us and then you have the national executive committee was also um, structured a farm woman. Sikola Sonke is a trade union um, driven by its members and farm worker and 80% of Sikola Sonke staff is former farm workers and farm dwellers and 70% um, of Sikola Sonke staff still living on farms. We also um, uh, um, um, focus on land and housing because um, um, after 94 um, the, the, the new trend that was on the farms is was, was when your child is 18 years old um, they say um, no your child don't have any tenure rights because um, he or she is 18 years old she must go and look for, uh, for a place for themselves and not knowing how that will be possible because as farm workers in, um, um, in, in, in South Africa um, the minimum wage a day is around um, five pounds. Um, the minimum wage a month is about 100 pounds and that is before deduction. Some people pay rent and most of the farms now have prepaid electri electricity in. Um, it's also a way of um, covering for those um, who live there who don't work there despite the fact that they are, they are not work anymore. Um, after the 10 year security act came in, it's a, it, 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 it was actually an act, a clever move um, by, by um, um, farmers and farmers organization and government to actually a way to get rid of the far people living on the farms. But when we um, as um, 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 the farm workers also came across the technicality, the, 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 tech, the, the, the techniques part of this um, law, and then we used, the, we used it then to, as a tool to resist evictions. So instead of more evictions, less evictions was then, was, 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 was then happening because, well, we find ways. We also um, 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 work with um, legal aid clinic, but also work with um, central, for, 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 for central for Rural Legal Studies, where they can also um, go through this stuff uh, um, uh, and also YLRC, where they can also go through this technical stuff and tell us um, wha, where we can actually um, um, can pr protect our people within these laws. And that's how we come to resist evictions. We also resist evictions by, um, if it's not, um, eviction is not legal, um, we go to a farm and we will ask the police to escort us where we manage to build um, good relations with the police. We will ask them to escort us and to take us to that farm where the illegal eviction is. Uh, because sometimes people come from the work and they will get a big, um, a big slot. What's the slot? Lock. A lock, a big lock with a thick chain. Um, and then you stand literally outside the door and um, your stuff is in your house. You don't know what to do. and. You just don't have a house anymore. So those evictions we resist. We take the police with and we ask the police, um, can you um, give us uh, the permission to cut this lock because um, this is an unfair eviction. This is an illegal eviction because even a lot of our policemen, they don't know the laws. So we also need to teach them in order for them to um, actually um, um, help us, but also to ensure that farm workers' rights are not violated. So in that regard, we resist. We've, res we've managed to also to um, to stop a lot of evictions. Just to um, I'm working with legal aid clinic is a legal aid clinic in Stellenbosch, um, where we will write a, 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 um, write a letter to them and let them know about these evictions, um, and they will write a letter. But in some cases, we write the farmer ourselves or speak with the farmer and say, look here, sir. Um, the, are you familiar with the ex, um, extension of um, extension security act? And he will say yes, or we say no. And when he say no, um, we will tell him, we will learn him. And um, if he don't um, obey, then um, we will just then give him over to a legal aid clinic, and he will then have to go and um, 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 go and um, go and explain to the court why he illegally evict people. 
We also um, in Sikola Sonke um, have um, workshops. We believe in workshopping our people, learning our people about their rights. Info sessions on farms, uh, whether it's um, labor related, whether it's social security, whether it's tenure, the information they seek, we go to them and we learn them and give them the information. But also the shop stewards and the branch executive are the people that we actually worked closely with together, uh, sorry, so that they can be the agents of self change within the farms and on the farms and also um, take up the issues um, that are faced by the farm women, farm workers and farm dwellers. Um, Sikola Sonke is very woman -center centered. Um, so women is part and parcel of every structure of Sikola Sonke. And there's a 70 to a 90% woman-led leadership in Sikola Sonke. We also saw, saw the success of being woman-centered because um, when you're a woman, you don't just um, come around the negotiation table and you speak about the wages, no. We speak about crashes for our children, we speak about daycare facilities, we speak about <coughs> transport to the doctor, transport to the clinic, transport to the schools for our children. We speak about maternity leave. Um, our law um, gives maternity leave, but it's unpaid. Um, but you can then claim um, unemployment insurance fund, which is maybe a 25% of the whole four month pay that you are supposed to pay. But in Sikola Sonke, we manage um, not on most of the farms, on the farms where farmers are really willing um, to improve the living and the working conditions of their of, of, of the workers. We managed to organ, uh, we managed to negotiate for a 25% um, of their salary, monthly salary, every month for the four months that they are at home and then at least they can bond with their children because it's very important to bond with your children. In the past, um, our farm people used to work with their children in the vineyards. So now at least there's crashes. Um, there is facilities um, where they know their children are safe and are taken care of and they can um, work um, at East. Um, we also um, organize um, farm meetings with, farm, with employers. In Sikola Sonke we believe um, we have matured. We started out as very angry, um, aggressive people because well, um, these things were just too much. Um, farm, farmers not respecting farm workers' rights, treating people like dirt, the animals being treated better than the farm workers. And up till today, you will still get farmers that, that sit with the, with the dog at the, at, in, in front and the farm worker will be at the back. But also you will all still, still get um, 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 a lot of farms where the, where the, where the farm worker, do, where the farmer's dog um, have a better life than the farm worker itself that are producing and generating the, the, the wealth of the, the specific farmers. Because that dog has a vet, that dog has shampoo, that dog has nice food, that dog has a cozy house. And when you go back to most of the farmers, uh, f f farm workers' house, you won't even get um, 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 that coziness because you went in the house but it's inside but it would look it will look like if you still are outside and we have those examples um, 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 on farms where um, 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 some people don't even have access to, to latrines where some people are still um, 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 drinking water um, and that's in your Robertson area where people some people still are drinking water and even in the Citrus Dal area as well um, at, in the same water that animals are drinking so, 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 but they are the 10% the that are good farmers and we really want to use, in Sikola Sonka, we promote those good farmers to influence the, the, the not so good ones, the bad ones. Um, it's very challenging, it's very hard because, well, um, this is a, um, 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 it's a backlog of 100, more than 100 years, 300 years, no? that we are now actually trying to um, 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 invent here which the 10% is very, is, 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 is very um, willing um, because you can also see the difference because on the farmers, on the farms where farm workers are being looked good after and taken good care of, that's where the, productive, the product is also good. But there's also farms that are highly productive, that, that are doing export, that are exporting um, 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 wines and fruits to the UK, um, which have the money to improve the living and the working conditions of the workers, but who just don't care. Because as 
we've entered in the trade um, the, 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 the trade development co uh, um, um, corporate agreements with the EU. Um, that was 2004. We've seen a shift and um, massive job losses. In, in South Africa now, they say they're creating jobs, but um, in fact, um, still more jobs are, are, are lost. We have lost over um, 1.5 million jobs in a, one year and a half in the last two years. And um, 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 we have seen how machines have taken over the work that used to be done by people. We have seen how women have suffered the consequences and are still bearing the brunt today because most women that were permanent are now have now become seasonal workers and most of them are working under labour brokers without any benefits. And most of the seasonal working women um, they're not living on the farm anymore, they're living off farms or they're living f or, or neighb or, or, or from neighboring farms. And these women are women that are, are mostly sing house, single household women um, who are also the, 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 the breadwinners within their families. And earning a wage, wage, a wage that um, isn't even up to 100, 100 pounds a year uh, sorry, 100 pounds a month. You can also see how um, come this year um, a survey was done in 2010. Um, dropouts, grade 10 dropouts are from the rural. It's farm worker kids because farm worker kids can't compete um, against um, the kids that are living in the townships and the kids that are living in the suburbs because in our schools, the thing that happens, if you can't pay your school fees, they hold back your report. If you don't have a full uniform on, despite the fact that you can't afford it, you are chased out of the gate and you, you, you are literally chased away from school. And um, it's, it is very painful and that's where most of the farm children decide, um, but I can't because it's actually breaking people's self-esteem, but also taking away the dignity and the will to want to learn, to want to become something away from our children because just you can't, uh, just um, because of the fact that you can't afford to pay the school fees. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, so, 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 so the thing that we also have, have, have seen under these labor brokers is um, grades have started now also to be invented. Um, women always do the lower paid work. Um, but in some, on some farms, um, women also carry the ladder and also get into that orchard um, to pick, but the salary will still remain um, lower than the, the salary of the men. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news and heard about the strikes. There's the Marikana, the mine strikes, the mine workers. Aha, uh -huh, I see the young people. <laughs> and then um, after that, that was the farm worker strikes. Um, farm workers have also gone into strikes. And some of those people that go in, went into those strikes were members of Sikula Sonke as well. Um, it's just so the frustration of um, people that were so exploited for so many years, but that have, um, have endured um, low wages, hunger wages, starvation um, for so many years. 2010, there was a research done by Women and Farms. 40% of farm workers are still going to bed hungry, despite the fact that they are working. We have examples of women telling us in workshops that um, every day I'm, we I'm wearing, uh, um, I'm wearing uh, um, a lunch box, but there's literally nothing in it, because I don't want actually my co-workers to know that um, I don't have anything to eat. And if it's lunchtime, um, I rather go for a walk or I read my paper because I don't have something to eat. And this is people that are working. This is people that have um, families, that have children. Farm children also wants to become doctors. Farm children also wants to become teachers. Farm children also wants to become the best they can be. But they are not allowed that because while determined by a hunger wage that is set by government and it's set by farmers, um, they are willing to give the farmer next to nothing for all the hardship and the hard work that they are doing. They are feeding the world, they are feeding the, way sh the, the nation, but yet they, they struggle to feed themselves. And at the end of the day, it's um, how can um, you guys um, actually help 
and be in solidarity with farm workers within South Africa because I know farm workers on this side. I met with the trade union yesterday. They are far more privileged than us. They, you don't actually um, see the direct poverty um, of these people. Yes, they, I have the challenges, the same challenges they experience there, but um, 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 it's not as um, visible and as objective as South Africa. And um, th these, some, on some of those, th those farms, especially the Sierra's area, where farm workers set alight the factories, which are their workplace, um, people are not stupid to set up, to set alight their own working place people. Something is very wrong with this picture. It's because people are paid peanuts, people are paid hunger and starvation wages, and people are so now, they are so fed up of being poor, they are so fed up of, of, of being hungry, that they um, will do anything to make the government and the farmers actually listen, that look here, we are actually generating your wealth. It's because of us that you can have what you have. Why is it so hard for you to see that um, what your kid needs, my kid also needs? What your wife needs, my wife also needs? What um, you need, my, I also need? What your family needs, I also need? So these people, um, 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 our farm workers said um, even if they get 150, that's 15 pounds a day, they will be they, they will be satisfied with it, which is still under the bread line when you actually see the value of the cost and how cost is going up and how profits is going up and how the wages is actually in fact demolishing and going down. So at the end of the day, what we would love to hear, uh, what we would love um, 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 from you guys is the, from the UK is even um, to put um, pressure on the supermarkets, your Tesco. Um, Tesco, um, a lot of our farms is, 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 is exporting to Tesco. But if you go back on some of those Tesco farms, it's so terrible. You can't imagine human beings um, living in the conditions they are living. They will show the Tesco people uh, the beautiful farm and the seven other farms. It's like appalling and those farms are not seen. So, 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 um, we want you guys to be in solidarity with us. We will, um, um, keep, um, 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 we work closely with Born Want. Um, Corn, um, have invited us, um, to this opportunity. And also through them, you can also see, um, um, what's going on on that side and how you can actually, um, how you can actually support our struggles of farm works and farm dwellers. On the 4th of December, that's the deadline. Um, where farm workers actually want to hear what um, government is saying. Are they going to give our people the 150 rand? Because the farmers say they can't. Um, they are the people determining that minimum wage. So um, if they don't get the 150, I don't know what will happen. And two farm workers have died within the, 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 the farm worker strike. 34 people have died within the Marikana strike. And those were people that were actually shot by our police. Um, um, the government in, in Western Cape wanted to, to, to deploy the army for defenseless farm people. So even here, we are actually um, we are squashed by even a system that's protecting the profits and the bosses and the people that are generating the wealth um, are not protected. They are dying because while um, everything is less important than profits. Profits has beca have become the most important thing. Because even as you've seen on the, the, mine, the mine worker strike, um, our people that's supposed to be our leaders, that's supposed to be the lawmakers, that are supposed to be in the interest of the, wor of the working class, they are the people that are the shareholders, that are the bosses. You see also on the farms, um, 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 there are some politicians that are farm owners so, so, so we workers are actually squashed in a system where you have the bosses as the lawmakers and the profit makers within the, in, 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 in this country that are, was in the globe, in the globe, where um, the, 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 the best thing for them is to protect and maintain and retain and grow the profit and um, 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 motivate and increase stu stru the structural um, um, decision-making um, 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 bodies that they already have. So thank you, I think I'm done.
Yeah, I just wanted to add like a few like wrap up uh, words. Basically, um, well, thank you once more for bringing stories of women laboring uh, in places as far apart as Honduras and South Africa, laboring in farms, in, in factories. Um, I hope you've um, um, felt inspired by the fact that when they organize, they address issues as varied as labor rights, including gender uh, pay gaps, but also uh, social issues such, uh, such as violence against women or housing rights. So um, they are being very holistic in, in what they do, uh, and, and they are doing this in very male-dominated uh, spaces, because, <coughs> because even spaces of resistance in, in the context where they live are very much male-dominated still. So I think they, they deserve a lot of attention uh, and a lot of uh, admiration too. Um, I also wanted to add um, that it is striking how while they talk about hunger and starvation uh, wages, in the UK we're seeing how progressively in work poverty is, is growing too. Um, this is, uh, in work poverty means that you're working and you're still re remain poor. You're still not able to, to meet ends at the end of the month. You're still not able to pay your bills. You remain within, uh, under the poverty, poverty levels. Um, I'd say this has something to do with the austerity they're imposing on us. Um, so I'd be very wary of the final outcome when these policies, when these uh, cuts are enforced 100%. So far, as I said before, we've only seen 6% of, of them. Uh, we might see pictures, perhaps not so as terrible as the ones described by our colleagues, but uh, uh, most likely much worse than what we can see today. Um, so let's, let's do build on in, in our international solidarity. I do believe, Cohn believes that uh, although lobbying and liaising with policy makers and official organisms is, is key, um, nowadays the situation is so serious and the attacks are uh, of such dimensions that international solidarity between grassroots organizations be these trade unions, feminist organizations, environmental organizations, or any, um, or, or any civil society organization of any kind. International solidarity from the grassroots to the grassroots is key if we are to challenge um, these systems that we call capitalism and patriarchy, and uh, which seem to be determined to get rid of all our rights uh, and continue exploiting uh, us. And so well, I'll leave it here before I get more upset and then yeah, we have a five minutes break and it'd be great if you could come back with questions, comments, ideas. Yeah.